Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, again, and uh, I'm very happy to uh, be able to take this uh, opportunity to, uh, um, well, actually uh, lead you into the, uh, the topic to give you an idea of what international marine environmental law uh, is about, where it comes from, and uh, where it is going to. Uh, this is also uh, reflected in the title by including, um, well, the, the momentum, you could say, in time of the triple planetary crisis. And during my presentation, I'm going to uh, give you an idea of uh, what, uh, uh, what this framework or this, uh, uh, this um, notion is about. Okay, I'm sorry. All right. So, um, a minute. Okay. Well, we start actually with um, uh, 1972, which is uh, taken as uh, the birth of modern uh, international environmental law, and by that, obviously, also uh, for international marine environmental law the United Nations uh, Conference on the Human Environment in Stockholm is, uh, is a very important uh, first step, you could say, um, to uh, institutionalize uh, international environmental law uh, on the international scene. And uh, within the declaration of the conference in principle seven, which reads, states shall take all possible steps to prevent pollution of the seas by substances that are liable to create hazards to human health, to harm living resources and marine life, to damage humanities, or to interfere with other legitimate uses of the sea. So this is actually the understanding of the international community of that time. And uh, as you can see also from the title of the conference, it was very much focused on the human element. So this is the starting point uh, and also uh, a good, good way ahead, uh, which, um, well, led us to uh, international environmental law as we know it today. Well, 10 years later, um, uh, most of you here in the room know 1982 is an important date with regard to the law of the sea. Um, uh, that means the adoption of the United Nations Convention for the Law of the Sea. And within that, you have uh, part uh, 12 on the protection and preservation of the marine environment, which also, from my point of view, is a very important element regarding the constitutional character of, uh, of UNCLOS, and uh, which gives us a, 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 a definite and very important obligation, a general obligation mentioned in uh, Article 192, which is uh, um, states have the obligation to protect and preserve the marine environment. So this is a very important next step uh, taken 10 years after Stockholm. Um, well, I, I sh don't have to mention that there has been, of course, also already initiatives and instruments uh, pre-Stockholm protecting the marine environment um, uh, within, let's say, the framework of the International Maritime Organization, but to keep it uh, uh, well, uh, to keep a better overview, we can say that these are the milestones so far: 1972, 1982, with regard uh, to uh, um, international environmental. 1994, um, the entering into force of our clause is, of course, a very next step, and this did not fall. Uh, just, uh, uh, well, from the sky. So we have to see this also in a, in a certain context. And in 1992, we do have uh, the United Nations Conference on Environment and Development, which is uh, a, a next important milestone with regard to international environmental law. Okay. So we do have the Earth Summit in Rio de Janeiro as, uh, as an important step, and you can see from the um, 
uh, bullet points here that uh, this has been a very effective, very productive uh, uh, conference in 1992, producing not only um, uh, very heavy and important uh, documents uh, uh, in the uh, in in uh, international law, you could say, um, uh, both uh, binding as well as non-binding instruments, um, and I. I of course, as a, as a lawyer, we always look into the question of what is binding, what is non-binding. But the uh, point is that um, nowadays, many many of these instruments, um, uh, well, you don't have this this very clear cut any longer. So they they kind of somehow uh, uh, are interlinked. And uh, I will show you within the next uh, minutes how that might uh, or how that uh, looks like in the um, uh, or with regard to the example of international marine environmental law. But uh, I should mention here in this context definitely the Convention on Biological Diversity (CBD), uh, but also the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, which uh, will play an important role. Uh, particularly with regard to the triple planetary crisis. And we will also look into that later on with regard to the uh, presentation of uh, um, Ximena Henrichs. Uh, and uh, that, then we will look into that more in detail. But 1992 uh, is not only a milestone, but also if we look back today, um, it is also a starting point of a full uh, process, you could say, which was initiated on the international um, uh, or in, in international fora. And I've, um, uh, from from the slide, you can see I've uh, made a, a, a little, um, how could you say, um, a differentiation between different sectors, um, which are helpful to, uh, well, kind of uh, get an overview, uh, even though they are very much interlinked and uh, are also uh, interrelated. So in 1992, as I said, the Rio conference was followed 10 years later by the World Summit on Sustainable Development in Johannesburg, um, uh, starting this, this, this process, you could say, which was then followed by uh, 2012, the uh, United Nations Con Conference on Sustainable Development, Rio Plus 20, uh, and uh, a very important document, which was the result of the uh, conference, The Future We Want. We will come to that uh, in a few minutes again. And just recently, in 2022, the Stockholm Plus, Plus 50 um, uh, uh, meeting was, uh, uh, was uh, um, not only an anniversary, but also, uh, um, well, showing that there is a, um, um, well, uh, this process starting in, in 1972 and still continuing, uh, producing um, both documents and uh, as I said, the soft law documents, yes, but still they document the position of the international uh, community with regard to international environmental law. Uh, beyond that, we do have uh, another important um, uh, uh, summit in 2015, the United Nations Sustainable Development Summit in, in New York. And uh, uh, this is uh, under the motto, Transforming Our World. And this produced another important paper, which we are using a lot in international environmental law. This is the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. So this is also to be seen in this context. And coming to international marine environmental law as a very special focus, we have a third pillar, you could say, starting in 2017 with the United Nations Ocean Conference, the first ocean conference in the UN uh, context uh, uh, order. or in this framework. Of course, uh, we do have uh, the previous uh, conferences with regard to UNCLOS, but uh, this one uh, uh, taking place in New York was followed 
uh, five years later by the United Nations Ocean Conference in Lisbon uh, with the uh, uh, outcome document, Our Ocean, Our Future, Our Responsibility, and we will uh, look into that in, in a minute as well. And in 2025, so next year, we will have uh, the United Nations Ocean Conference in Nice, which uh, will hopefully become a very good success with regard uh, also uh, to uh, um, uh, another very important instrument, which was adopted last year, the BBNJ agreement, but that we will touch in a minute as well. Um, I would like to come back to uh, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, which is uh, still a very important uh, 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 document in place, which uh, um, is also deciding on a lot of initiatives and activities in, uh, on the international scene. And uh, we do have um, the uh, United Nations General Assembly Resolution uh, 70 uh, slash 1, Transforming Our World, um, which is, as I said, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. And in para 33, it reads, we are therefore determined to conserve and sustainably use oceans and seas and to protect biodiversity, ecosystems and wildlife. So this is, of course, also an obligation which uh, uh, follows uh, out, of, out of this agenda. Um, another important thing is uh, that uh, within this context, uh, the uh, United Nations Sustainable Development goal, Goals were introduced, and we do have uh, Goal 14, which is of particular interest here, uh, uh, of course, and at that time, uh, well, I would, I would say that this was also the strongest focus now that is, uh, I would uh, also include, let's say, uh, uh, the Sustainable uh, Development Goal on, on climate change and uh, others which do play an important role. But at that time, uh, uh, I would like to um, uh, stress Goal 14, uh, conserve and sustainably use the oceans, seas and marine resources for sustainable development. So uh, just to uh, have a, a, a little closer look, I would like to um, look into Sustainable Development Goal 14 in Section C, uh, which reads, enhance the conservation and sustainable use of oceans and their resources by implementing international law as reflected in the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, which provides the legal framework for the conservation and sustainable use of oceans and their resources as recalled in paragraph 158 of the future we want. So you can see that uh, there is a, um, a link and also a reference both to the legal binding instrument, uh, which is, uh, well, UNCLOS of course, but also towards uh, a non-binding instrument, uh, uh, the future we want. Uh, as I've already mentioned, uh, coming from Rio Plus 20. Well, the international uh, community uh, knew that, uh, of course, uh, progress uh, in the protection and preservation of the marine environment can only be achieved, actually, if you have uh, the, the proper knowledge. So, uh, this uh, instrument of uh, UN decades were used in order to introduce uh, two important decades in this context I would like to mention. First is the UN decade on ecosystem restoration and its importance for ecosystems in marine and coastal areas, uh, and also the UN decade of uh, ocean science for sustainable development and its objectives and activities, as well as its vision to achieve the science we need for the ocean we want. So uh, you have perhaps also noticed that this workshop is uh, part of, of uh, this UN decade, and uh, uh, we are happy also to use this channel to communicate the uh, uh, presentations and activities we have, uh, 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 well, um, 
well, we are presenting today, actually. Also to reach, of course, a wider audience uh, than we can, uh, in, uh, uh, well, in, in an offline, uh, in-person workshop here in Genoa. Well, um, if we look into uh, the uh, Ocean Conference, as I've already said, 2022, our ocean, our future, our responsibility, uh, which uh, puts, well, uh, uh, well, you could say some homework on our table. Um, I would like to mention United Nations General Assembly Resolution 76-296, our ocean, our future, our responsibility. And uh, to mention three paragraphs from there, para three reads, we recognize that the ocean is fundamental to life on our planet and to our future. As well as para five, which reads, we reaffirm that climate change is one of the greatest challenges of our time. And we are deeply alarmed by the adverse effects of climate change on the ocean and marine life. And para 10, we affirm the need to enhance the conservation and sustainable use of oceans and their resources by implementing international law. And these paragraphs, of course, and uh, this is uh, obvious, are of uh, particular importance with regard to the uh, topics we are covering uh, in this workshop and uh, which are, of course, important uh, to achieve uh, a better protection and preservation of the marine environment. So um, when it comes to the uh, wording of the triple planetary crisis, uh, I would like uh, to cite um, uh, uh, our uh, UN Secretary General uh, who made remarks at the Stockholm Plus 50 international meeting in 2022. And there he said, we face a triple planetary crisis, a climate emergency that is killing and displacing ever more people each year. So this is an uh, uh, important um, uh, uh, notion he made with regard uh, to the obligations of the international community and uh, uh, the triple planetary crisis include uh, climate change, referring to long-term shifts in temperatures and weather patterns that in long-term run will uh, completely alter the ecosystems that support life on the planet also includes pollution, including marine pollution characterized by the release of pollutants and harmful substances, and biodiversity loss, which refers to the decline or disappearance of biological diversity, which includes animals, plants, and ecosystems. So I would like to uh, mention just sh shortly a few key elements uh, uh, in, this, in this context. And first of all, as I've already mentioned, in the context of the 1992 Rio conference, we do have the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. And uh, um, well, just recently, the five key ocean-based climate actions for people and nature, including marine conservation, shipping, ocean renewable energy, aquatic food and coastal tourism as uh, key factors, you could say, within um, the uh, United Nations Framework Convention. And we do have, uh, uh, since this year, uh, the ocean and climate change dialogue, including marine biodiversity conservation and coastal resilience and technology needs for the ocean, so uh, climate action, including also uh, financed links, which uh, uh, is not only a, a request by the United Nations Framework Convention, but it is also part of their uh, own initiative led uh, for, for, uh, from the United Nations Environment Programme, so including the finance sector also with regard to climate change. Um, of course, uh, on the climate change, we will have uh, our next presentation. But I would also like to mention uh, an initiative uh, in the context of, of IMO, the International Maritime Organization, which will also be uh, uh, one of our uh, um, presentations of today. 
And I would like to um, uh, cite here as well the IMO Secretary uh, General um, uh, in uh, London um, uh, last year, where he said the adoption of the 2023 IMO Greenhouse Gas Strategy is a monumental development for IMO and opens a new chapter towards maritime decarbonization. At the same time, it is not the end goal. It is, in many ways, a starting point for the work that needs to be intensified uh, even more over the years and decades ahead of us. However, with the revised strategy that you have now agreed on, we have a clear direction, common vision, and ambitious targets to guide us to deliver what the world expects from us. So I think this has to be seen in a, in a certain context, and we will see in the next two presentations that this is a, a very um, a ambitious, uh, uh, but also a very important uh, target. There are more initiatives. If you uh, uh, think about the triple planetary crisis with um, uh, uh, climate change, you have uh, the second pillar is uh, um, pollution. Uh, I've just, uh, uh, or I would like to give just one very recent example of an initiative taken uh, at the um, uh, uh, United Nations Environment Program um, uh, at the uh, UN uh, uh, Environment Assembly in 2022, uh, which is entitled Any Plastic Pollution Towards an International Legally uh, Binding Instrument. So there is an initiative uh, to, uh, to deal and, uh, well, I wouldn't say solve the issue, but to deal with that and to achieve uh, a better uh, protection and preservation of the marine environment also on, on this side. So this is something we will have to, um, uh, we will have to uh, uh, follow very closely to see that this is also uh, an important uh, step ahead. We do have uh, the BBNJ agreement, which uh, has been, um, well, the focus of our last year's workshop. So I'm not going too much into it, but I would like to mention that uh, in the context of the uh, biodiversity loss issue of the triple planetary crisis, and, um, uh, well, as uh, we have uh, uh, already ex explained last year, the agreement under the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea uh, on the conservation and sustainable use of marine biological diversity of areas beyond national jurisdiction um, was adopted and allows, uh, uh, once uh, it entered into force, also a better protection and preservation of the marine environment in areas beyond national jurisdiction. And we will hear something about uh, um, the, the area and uh, deep seabed mining uh, uh, later on um, and uh, the, uh, well, you could say, activities going on on the international level, particularly with regard to the International Seabed Authority to protect uh, biodiversity loss in areas beyond national jurisdiction. Well, basically, that's uh, um, just a short uh, introduction, of course, as I have uh, promised, uh, to our today's topic. And I thank you for the attention, and uh, I would like to refer to Lorenzo to introduce the next speaker. Thank you very much. Thank you.